Thank you to Medspira for allowing me to introduce this product to you for anal rectal manometry. My name is Abhi Patil and I'm a practicing gastroenterologist here in Florida. Today I'll be introducing you to anal rectal manometry, which is a simple, quick, safe, and effective way of evaluating defecatory disorders. I personally use this product to evaluate my patients for constipation, fecal incontinence, and pelvic floor dyssinergia, as well as anal spasm prior to or following hemorrhoidal therapy. I've also used this product to evaluate patients after biofeedback therapy to assess the efficacy of therapy. And this video is meant to introduce you to this product and how it can be used in your clinical practice. Today, I will be discussing basic management of anal rectal disorders. This is meant to be a primer for the management of anal rectal disorders and meant to be an introduction to common complaints you may see in the clinical setting. In my talk, I'm gonna review common complaints by patients. I'm gonna go over the anatomy and physiology of the anal rectum. Then we'll give a demonstration of how anal rectal manometry is performed along with balloon expulsion testing. And then we'll conclude with some management strategies for these common complaints and walk away with some summary points. One of the most common complaints is anal rectal pain. The most common reason for anal rectal pain is an anal fissure. It could, however, be a perianal abscess or a rectal abscess, an acutely thrombosed hemorrhoid, or anal rectal carcinoma. This highlights the importance of a rectal exam prior to doing any further testing. Anal rectal cancer, as well as an acutely thrombosed hemorrhoid, are visibly obvious. Sometimes perianal and rectal abscesses need to be palpated to elicit pain or tenderness. Other causes of anal rectal pain include levator ani syndrome, proctalgia fugax, and coccygodynia. Treatment for this includes sitz baths, reassurance, muscle relaxation, as well as physical therapy. Another complaint that patients come in with is anal rectal bleeding. Of course, we have to consider colonic bleeding, such as colon cancer, diverticular bleeding, and AVMs. However, other anal rectal causes are possible, such as an anal fissure, which is probably very common, internal hemorrhoids, or anal rectal carcinoma, which again can be picked up at the time of anoscopy or colonoscopy or flexible sigmoidoscopy. Rectal prolapse can occasionally cause anal rectal bleeding as well. Patients can also come in with itching. Itching can be a manifestation of internal hemorrhoids, pruritus ani, rectal prolapse, or a perianal skin disorder. Some common disorders include fungal disease, eczema, psoriasis, and atypical dermatitis. These are also obvious on rectal examination. Finally, another common complaint is anal rectal discharge. This can be a manifestation of rectal prolapse, internal hemorrhoids, anal rectal fistulas, or can be functional and related to irritable bowel syndrome. But the most common complaint is obviously constipation. This can be a very complex symptom. Causes include slow transit constipation, which can be either a myopathy or a neuropathy. Diagnosis is typically made by a deep mucosal biopsy or a full thickness biopsy. Chronic idiopathic constipation, for which medications such as Miralax, Linz-S, Amatiza, or other medications are available. Irritable bowel syndrome, constipation subtype, medication-induced constipation, for which, of course, you stop the offending agent, dyssynergic defecation, for which you need anal rectal manometry to make the diagnosis, and we treat this with physical therapy, or it can be an anatomic variant, such as a rectocele. Diagnosis for this usually includes a pelvic MRI or defecography, and treatment is surgical correction. Some key clues to evaluate constipation include, does the patient have straining? If they do, consider mechanical causes or consider anal rectal manometry. Does the patient have infrequent bowel movements? If so, consider laxatives. What are the consistency of the stools? Consider stool softeners. And does the patient use ancillary maneuvers, such as perianal support or manual disimpaction? Consider mechanical causes or anal rectal manometry to evaluate pelvic causes. Probably one of the most distressing complaints is incontinence. Causes include overflow incontinence, pudendal nerve injury, prior obstetric injury or other trauma to the sphincters, pelvic floor weakness, rectal prolapse, internal hemorrhoids, anal rectal fistula, or another general GI disorder for diarrhea, and some myopathies and neuropathies. Treatments for incontinence include multimodality treatments, Kegel exercises to strengthen the anal rectal muscles, surgical repair of the injured muscle, physical therapy, such as biofeedback therapy, sacral neuromodulators, such as inner stem, bulking agents, like fiber products, injections for bulking, like Celesta, or treating the underlying diarrheal or medical disorder. 